Hi everyone, I'm Michai here. In today's video, we're going to talk about event storming. What is event storming? Well, let's imagine you're working at some company like Airbnb and you have all these different departments and different very important people, each one with their own agendas and things that are important for them. How do you get all these people agreeing on one narrative using the same terminology and how do you actually solve these very complex problems when each person is working on their own space, their own department, their own silo. So how do you get all these people agreeing on one thing? If you're going to try to do it over email, then good luck, it'll take you months and you want to hope that the communication actually worked. And that's what event storming comes to solve. It's basically taking all the relevant people, putting them in one room and discussing the problem, visualizing it, agreeing on the terminology, what's more important than other things and getting started to actually solve these problems. Okay, now right off the bat, there are three main types of event storming. The first one is big picture event storming. That's similar to the scenario that we gave before. So you might have the CEO, the founder, the CTO, COO, maybe HR, sales, all the relevant people from the different departments in one room and we're exploring the problem space. So if we're talking about a startup that's now only starting, then maybe it's talking about how the product is gonna launch, what the product is going to actually look like, what the experience is going to look like. And you might have so many different events happening during this process, right? Like product launch, product announced, website ready, right? All these different events. And it's just getting everyone in the same room talking about the timeline, what's going to happen and what it's going to look like. Okay, that's big picture event storming. Okay, the next type of event storming is process modeling. The scope of process modeling is smaller. You choose some process inside your system that you want to model. So if we're talking about Airbnb, it might be the process of a guest looking for a place to stay. So going into the app, finding somewhere that he wants, trying to reserve, and until the end where he leaves a review for the apartment, for example, that might be the flow and how do you process it? And the third main type of event storming is software design event storming, where that's if you're working with domain driven design, that's the part where you start spawning aggregates, you group your events and your commands around these aggregates, and you can really start imagining what the code is going to look like, what the methods are going to look like, what properties you might need in the aggregates. And it's really something that will be similar to what you're going to have in the code in the end where you're actually modeling your software. Okay, now what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to get familiar with the three main types of event storming, get a feel to what it might actually look like when you're doing it on your own. And the second thing we're going to do today is we're going to be convinced that this is something that we want to give a try, even if we're just working at a big corporation like me and you have a big feature that you're working on, why it's a great tool to visualize the problem that you're trying to solve. Maybe you're working on a brick feature. Maybe you're thinking about some genius application like Boober Dinner, and it has a complex domain and you want to model what things might look like. So why you might want on your own to just go online and try to visualize the different problem and why it's a great tool to add to your toolkit. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to get familiar with the types of event storming, let's imagine a system that's similar to Airbnb where you can take your house and turn it into a hotel. Then you can take your house and turn it into a restaurant. So basically you are a user, you can become a host, you can schedule dinners and guests can scroll the different dinners and reserve spots in the dinner. So let's start with process modeling. All you need to know for process modeling is the following. So let's imagine we have the host right? And he wants to create a dinner. So he says, create dinner. This is the command that he's invoking. A command is invoked on some system. Let's imagine it's invoked on the dinner system. Then this thing raises some domain event, or just we can imagine it as something interesting happened in our system. So in our case, it's dinner created, right? This is something that we care about. And the event results in one of the following. So this might be simply the, I don't know, confirmation number returned to the user, right? So a read model is basically information, right? So this, the information that is needed for the different view. So if we're imagining the client wants to present the dinner details, so it might be the confirmation number and let's say the dinner details, but it also might be the information that the host is sending to the dinner, 
what the system needs to make a decision of whether or not this dinner is valid or to simply create the dinner. Okay, so what we have on the screen is almost everything you need to know to get started with process modeling. So let's zoom in and see what we have. So basically we have the read model. It's observed by the user. Maybe it's information that the user inputted. Maybe it's search results and the user decides to click on one of the results or something like that. Then what the user decides to do is to trigger some command. So in our case, we have the host inputting the dinner details and invoking the create dinner command. The command is always invoked on some system. And after this completed, then we have some event that happened in our system that we care about. In our case, it's the dinner created. And this results in a read model back to the user. This might be the confirmation details. Okay, now this is the flow. These are the rules of the game. So over here, this might now be observed by the host again. And this starts again. So after a green, you have to have yellow. After a yellow, you have to have blue and so on. But there's one more thing that might be. So after a domain event, you might also have a policy. So for example, this might be the dinner created policy. And the policy might be, for example, sending a confirmation email. So send confirmation email, for example. And again, now we're over here. And whoop, after this, we might we must have a system again. So this might be on the email system, right? And this produces some domain event. In our case, it's the email sent, which results again after orange, we have either this or a policy. So let's say that after this, we have the same thing where you have the confirmation number and the dinner details returned to the user. So what is process modeling? Well, process modeling is the following. You basically, let's look at an example. You basically, start with some frame that you want to work on. So for example, you put some events for context. For example, this might be user registered, user approved as host, user created a menu already, for example. Then we might have the dinner details being inputted by the host and he sends the command of create dinner. And the last event might be that the dinner ended or that the guest was billed for the dinner. And the question is, how do you go from this command over here to these events over here, following only these rules? Okay, now the reason why this is so powerful is if you're working using domain driven design and CQRS, what you're going to have on the screen is going to be very similar to what you're going to have actually in your code, in your code base. So here you have a living artifact, something that you can share, you can refer back to when implementing. Everyone agrees on what it's supposed to look like. Okay, now there are two last things that we didn't talk about, and that is hotspots and opportunities. So basically, every time there's something that we want to discuss, something we don't agree on, maybe something that we're not sure about, then it could be either a hotspot or an opportunity. If this is some unexplored branch, for example, what happens if the guest is trying to reserve a spot, but the dinner is already full. In the meantime, there was some race condition. Then what do we do in that situation? This might be an opportunity to suggest a different dinner, but it also might be a hotspot of like, what do we want to do in this scenario, right? So this is like a conversation starter. Maybe it's a branch that we haven't yet explored. So we simply mark it as a hotspot and we can get back to it later. Or this is just something that's not prioritized and we want to leave for later, but we want to remember that there's something to be discussed. Okay, so that's process modeling in a few minutes. Okay, moving on to big picture event storming. This is a bit different. So over here, the scope is bigger. Like we said, we have all the important people in one room, the people who know to ask the correct questions, but also the people who know and have the authority to answer these questions or make decisions. And the way this looks like is you basically have everyone just taking orange sticky notes, putting every domain event that they might think about and putting it on the board. That's the first step. Then the second step is trying to put it in some timeline that makes sense. Now you might have different things happening in the same time. So you might have different swim lanes where different things are happening. And if there are questions, unresolved stuff, then you simply put a hotspot or an opportunity next to it. Some events might be very important. So you might want to mark them as pivotal events, something that when this happens, then many different processes are invoked in the same time. 
and this is just something that we want to have a visual cue that is more important okay the next step is defining actors and systems so like we said many events have an actor that initiated them so defining those actors defining the external systems that we're working with maybe it might be an email system or a payment system and so on okay and the next step is basically talking through the sequence of the events and seeing that it makes sense maybe some issues will arise and you need to add more to event events maybe more hotspots opportunities right this is something that might arise when trying to talk through the things or another strategy is picking some event in the end and looking at the events that caused that event to see that it makes sense that it's consistent and another option is that each person gets two arrows and they choose whatever hotspot or opportunity they think is most important and what you'll have in the end is this giant board, many sticky notes with a lot of arrows and you know exactly what people think is the most important and everyone is on the same page. Okay, I know you're looking at this and you're saying this is way too small to actually read the text. Well, luckily, this is a free tool that I created and I'm announcing now for you to use. We'll talk about it in a few minutes, but this is basically for you to be able to start doing event storming today, collaborating with people. This is a Figma community file so you could have tens of people working at the same time, having conversations with, between them, tagging people. This, I see a lot of potential for it, but more about this in the end. Okay, the last type of event storming I want to talk about is software design. This is basically the continuation of process modeling. So we finished doing process modeling. We have something similar to what we have on the screen, but the entire process, it's very natural to start noticing all these different aggregates whose responsibility it is to do the different things right right so over here it says dinner system but whose responsibility is it actually and it makes sense to start creating the different aggregates that you might have in your system and grouping the different components around these aggregates so you might take the different events and put them around the aggregates and it's really easy to start imagining what the domain layer will actually look like Okay, this is the third type of event storming. So we have big picture, process modeling, and software design. Okay, now what I did as part of creating the Boober Dinner System is I did big picture event storming. I imagined that I'm some startup and how I would actually launch this as a product, but also what are the different scenarios in our system. Then I did process modeling event storming where I actually looked at the entire process of what the application might look like. And it raised a lot, a lot of questions and my domain became much richer than I originally thought. Okay, the last thing I want to do as part of this video is to announce this tool that I created. So basically when I was preparing for this video, I couldn't find an online event storming tool that I liked and I thought would be easy to demonstrate what we did today and what we're going to be doing in the next videos. Everyone is using this notes app and I'm not sure how they're tolerating the fact that the text is different sizes depending on how much text is inside the sticky note. I'm hoping that what I created is currently the best tool for doing online event storming, but you'll be the judge of that. I'm really, really curious to hear what you think about it and if you find it useful. If following this video, then you're arriving at this tool and trying it out for the first time, maybe you're doing event storming alone and maybe you're doing it with other people, or if you've done workshops and you've done a lot of event storming, then how is this experience compared to the different tools out there? So basically what you have is follow the link in the description, go to this community, Figma file. If you're not familiar with Figma, it's the tool that most UI UX developers use to create mocks and imagine how things are going to look like in exploration. And it's very collaborative. Many people can work at the same time. It's really, really powerful. It has everything you need for event storming and much more. So click the link and you'll arrive over here. And what you have is the following. So this is the file that I created. And right out the bat, you can already zoom in and start looking at what this looks like. Okay, this is just the intro page, just something sexy to get you interested in the tool. But what you care about is over here. So you can see the different pages that there are. Let me zoom in. And you can see that there are basically three different categories. There's big picture event storming, there's process modeling event storming, and software design, basically everything you need for each one of the types that I presented today. So all you need to do to get started is click the get a copy, and this will create a local file in your account you can edit it share it and it's completely private of course so clicking on that will open the file and what you care about is as following so over here on the left you have the layers and the assets in the layers you can choose whatever event storming type that you want so for example let's go to the big picture event storming and it takes you 
over here. Okay, so going up and down is simply scrolling. If you want to zoom in and out, then hold the control while scrolling and it'll take you in and out. If you want to move around, then you can either use the hand tool and go around, or while staying in this mode, you can hold down space and drag around. Okay, now each one of the pages basically has an explanation for that type of event storming. These are loose guidelines, just do whatever works for you. But this is what I compiled based on Alberto's book, who's the one that invented event storming. So you can see, like we said, for big picture, we have chaotic exploration, then we have enforcing the timeline, and so on, you get the idea. And going to the actual board itself, then you have here a few options. You can either hold down Alt while dragging, that will create a duplicate of that file, or you can go to assets, and over here you'll have everything I created for you. So simply drag it and use it, and you have it anywhere you go, obviously. And if you're doing big picture event storming, and you need some other things, for example, you want to mark a pivotal event, or maybe you have different swim lanes, then over here you have the different assets for you to be able to use. And there are two more things that you might care about. So any item you click then over here, you can play with its definition. You might not need it at all. If you want to change the background, that's the only difference between the light mode and the dark mode in these files, then simply choose whatever other one that you want. And I did it so that the colors adjust more or less. So the supports many out of the box, simply go to whatever color you want, choose it and see if it's readable and if you like it. And the last thing you might care about is over here on each one of the pages, there's the glossary specific for that type of event storming. So of course, I don't expect you to remember everything we talked about. So you have it over here like a cheat sheet. Okay, so that's it. I really hope you found this video useful and this tool. I hope that you'll find it useful. So that's it. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the entire process modeling for our application Boober Dinner. So I really hope you're going to enjoy it and that it's going to be educational. It's not your traditional to-do list example. It's a really complex domain with a lot of aggregates and a lot of behaviors. And we'll see in the end that it's going to be very similar to the code that we're going to write in the end. Okay, so that's it. And I'll see you in the next one.